Level zero. It starts here. Level zero. The kind of natural disaster that might not flatten a city, but can still ruin your weekend plans and your lungs. Dust storms and sandstorms might sound tame compared to what is coming, but they are the reason entire highways disappear in seconds. Literally. These are localized atmospheric disturbances where strong winds whip up dry loose soil and turn it into a moving wall of dust. In the American Southwest, they are called haboobs. And yes, that is a real term. In places like Arizona, one minute you are driving under a blue sky, and the next it looks like the apocalypse just clocked in for its shift. What makes these storms dangerous is not brute force. It is invisibility. Visibility can drop to zero in seconds. Planes get grounded, highways shut down, and people caught without protection breathe in microscopic dust particles that can do long-term damage to their lungs. Now scale that up to a desert region in the Middle East or North Africa, and you are talking about a weather event that can cover thousands of square kilometers, last for hours, and force millions indoors. The 1930s Dust Bowl in the United States started with storms like these. Eventually, they choked farmland and fueled one of the worst ecological collapses in American history. So, yes, it is not a tornado flipping your car, but it is not exactly harmless either. Level zero disasters might not not make headlines, but they are the opening act. They disrupt, irritate, and occasionally blindside entire cities. And the worst part is, you usually do not see them coming until it is way too late. Level 1. Alright, so now the sky is in a worse mood. Welcome to level 1 where things get louder, wetter, and occasionally a little violent. Thunderstorms are like nature's tantrum. Hot air rises, cold air drops, clouds boil up into giant towers, and suddenly the atmosphere decides to throw a full-blown party in the sky. Thunder, lightning, sheets of rain, and if you are lucky, hail the size of golf balls. If you are unlucky, it is baseballs. Let us talk lightning. A single bolt can reach over 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That is five times hotter than the surface of the sun. It is fast, brutal, and almost always personal. Every year, lightning strikes kill about 2,000 people globally. And it is not just out in the wilderness. People have been hit while indoors, on the phone, and yes, even while sitting on the toilet. You cannot make this up. Then there is hail. It forms when updrafts in a thundercloud toss raindrops into freezing layers over and over again. The longer they loop, the bigger they grow. Some hailstones have smashed through roofs and windshields. One storm in Bangladesh dropped hail that weighed nearly 2 pounds and killed 92 people in a single afternoon. And let us not forget microbursts. They are sudden, vicious blasts of wind that shoot straight down from thunder thunderclouds and flatten everything beneath. Planes have crashed because of them. Trees snap like twigs. It is like getting slapped by the atmosphere itself. Thunderstorms might feel common or even cozy if you are watching from inside with a warm drink. But make no mistake, these are not harmless summer rain showers. Level 1 disasters bring chaos in small electric doses. Level 2. Now the temperature drops and nature decides it is time for a deep freeze. Level 2 disasters do not roar like a tornado or strike like lightning. They creep in quietly, chill you to the bone, and refuse to leave. Blizzards bring howling winds, whiteout conditions, and snow so thick it can bury entire towns. Visibility drops to nothing. Roads vanish. Power lines snap under the weight of ice and you suddenly realize how much you depend on heat, electricity, and working plumbing. It is all fun and games until your pipes freeze solid and you have to melt snow just to flush the toilet. Then come the ice storm. It is not just cold, it is slick, sharp, and silent. Rain falls, freezes instantly on contact, and coats everything in a glassy, dangerous shell. Trees collapse under the weight, power grids fail. In 1998, one of the worst ice storms in North American history knocked out power to millions and caused more than $5 billion in damage. But cold waves are where things get deadly. These are extended periods of dangerously low temperatures, often hitting regions that are not built to handle them. In 2021, Texas was slammed with a historic cold snap. Power plants froze, water systems failed, and more than 200 people lost their lives, many from hypothermia in their own homes. And here's the scary part. Cold does not need to scream to kill. It just needs time. The human body loses heat fast, and once it drops too far, things shut down quickly. You cannot see cold coming, but it is always there waiting outside the door. So far we have faced wind, lightning, and ice. But water? Water is just getting started. Level 3. Now we reach the most common natural disaster on Earth. Water might give life, but in the wrong place at the wrong time, it takes everything. Level 3 is the flood, and it does not knock. It crashes in. Floods happen when water overwhelms the land. It can come from heavy rain, rapid snowmelt, storm surges, or failing dams. What starts as a rising stream can turn into a wall of destruction moving fast enough to sweep away cars, houses, even entire neighborhoods. Unlike a tornado or quake, floods give you time to panic. You see the water coming, but you are helpless to stop it. In in 1931, China experienced the deadliest flood in recorded history. Rivers overflowed for months. An estimated 2 million people lost their lives from drowning, disease, and famine. It was not just a disaster, it was devastation on a scale that defies imagination. And floods are not ancient history. In 2022, record monsoon rains hit Pakistan. A third of the country was underwater. 
Millions displaced, crops wiped out, roads and bridges snapped like twigs. Recovery takes years. In some places, it never really ends. But it is not just about rising water. It is about what the water leaves behind. Mud, sewage, bacteria, and in some cases, entire ecosystems turned upside down. Cities built on floodplains are especially vulnerable, and as climate shifts and sea levels rise, floods are hitting harder and more often. This is not just bad weather. It is a full environmental reset. And while water can drown the land, fire has its own way of consuming it. Because when the rain stops falling and the ground turns to tinder, nature lights the match. Level 4 at level 4, the air turns dry, the wind picks up, and the ground becomes fuel. This is where fire stops being controlled and starts behaving like a living thing. Wildfires do not just burn. They chase, they leap, and they grow faster than most people can run. A wildfire can start from something as small as a cigarette or a lightning strike. But once it begins, everything depends on wind, heat, and terrain. Flames can reach heights of over 100 feet. The heat can melt steel. And when conditions are right, it creates its own weather. That is not an exaggeration. Some wildfires generate fire clouds that produce lightning and start more fire fires miles away. The 2019 fires in Australia were so large they turned the skies orange, triggered mass evacuations, and burned over 46 million acres. That is more than the size of Greece. In California, entire towns have vanished in a single afternoon. Paradise was one of them. In 2018, it took just a few hours for a blaze to reduce that town to ash. And it is not just flames that kill. Wildfires poison the air with fine particles that lodge deep in the lungs. Smoke can travel hundreds of miles, affecting people who never even see the fire itself. Climate change is pushing wildfires into new regions and stretching fire season into fire year. Hotter temperatures Temperatures mean drier forests, and drier forests mean faster ignition. Firefighters now battle infernos that behave nothing like what they were trained for. Water overwhelms. Fire devours. But next comes something even more unpredictable. Something with no warning, no shape, and no mercy. When the wind twists into a funnel and touches the ground, everything changes. Level 5. This is where nature loses all patience. At level 5, the wind does not just blow. It spins, tightens, and touches the ground with devastating force. Tornadoes are some of the most violent storms on the planet, and when they hit, there is almost no time to react. A tornado forms when warm, moist air near the ground meets cold, dry air above. If wind conditions are just right, the atmosphere starts to rotate. What begins as a horizontal swirl tilts upright and drops from the sky as a funnel cloud. When that funnel makes contact with the ground, it becomes a tornado, and everything in its path is now in danger. Most tornadoes last just a few minutes. Some are barely wide enough to knock over a tree, but others grow into monsters. The strongest can reach wind speeds over 200 miles per hour. An EF5 tornado can rip houses off their foundations, lift cars into the air, and turn everyday objects into deadly projectiles. In 2011, Joplin, Missouri was struck by one of the deadliest tornadoes in modern U.S. history. It flattened schools, hospitals, and entire neighborhoods. Over 150 lives were lost in just 38 minutes. And these storms do not just destroy, they confuse, they erase landmarks. They scatter debris for miles. Survivors have reported walking for hours through what used to be their town, unable to tell where they were. Tornadoes are fast, random, and unforgiving. You can prepare. You can take shelter. But once the sirens start and the sky turns green, all you can do is hope you are not in the bullseye. But there is something even more powerful than the wind. It starts deep below the ground and can change entire continents in a matter of seconds. Level 6. At level 6, the ground itself turns against us. There is no warning, no buildup, no countdown. Just a sudden jolt, followed by chaos. Earthquakes do not come from the sky, they come from below. And when they hit, they tear apart everything we thought was solid. An earthquake begins when pressure builds along a fault line. Two massive slabs of earth grind together, slowly storing energy for years, decades, even centuries. Then one day, that pressure breaks. In an instant, Seismic energy is released, and the ground begins to shake. Buildings collapse. Roads split open. Water and gas lines rupture. And sometimes the shaking never stops with just one event. In 2011, Japan was rocked by a magnitude 9.0 earthquake. It was one of the most powerful ever recorded. Skyscrapers swayed like trees. Coastal cities were torn apart, and the shaking alone caused billions in damage. But that was only the beginning. The real catastrophe came afterward. That same quake triggered a tsunami and a nuclear disaster. In Chile, 1960, another massive quake changed the shape of the country and caused waves that circled the globe. These are not isolated events. They are chain reactions. Even smaller quakes can be dead in the wrong place. Cities built without proper reinforcement crumble quickly, landslides are triggered, fires ignite, and aftershocks can continue for days, keeping survivors in a state of constant fear. Earthquakes remind us that nothing under our feet is truly stable. No warning system can predict them precisely. No technology can stop them once they begin. We build on fault lines and hope they stay quiet. But deep inside the earth, pressure is always building. And when the land breaks, the sea is never far behind. Level 7. 
When the ocean rises, it does not knock politely. It roars in with no mercy and no time to escape. Level 7 is the tsunami, and it begins with silence. A tsunami is not just a big wave. It is the ocean reacting to a massive disturbance, usually an undersea earthquake, volcanic eruption, or even a landslide. When the seafloor shifts, it pushes a wall of water outward in every direction. That energy travels fast, sometimes faster than a jet, and in the deep ocean, you would barely notice. But as it approaches land, everything changes. The wave slows down, but it grows taller, much taller. The ocean pulls back from the shore, exposing the seabed. That is the warning sign. People walk out to see where the water went, not realizing what is about to crash down on them. In 2004, a magnitude 9.1 earthquake struck off the coast of Sumatra. What followed was one of the deadliest natural disasters in human history. A tsunami swept across the Indian Ocean, striking Indonesia, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and India. Over 200,000 lives were lost in a matter of hours. Whole towns erased. No warning, no time. Japan experienced its own tsunami nightmare in 2011. Waves reached over 40 feet high. Cars, buildings, and entire neighborhoods were carried inland like toys. The water flooded a nuclear plant and triggered a second disaster no one was prepared for. What makes tsunamis so terrifying is not just their size. It is their unpredictability. They can strike day or night. They can hit one coastline and leave another untouched. And once they arrive, escape becomes nearly impossible. The ocean always looks calm until it does not. But next comes a force that rises from deep within the earth itself. And it explodes. Level 8. There is no force more ancient or more explosive than fire rising from the earth. At level 8, we enter the world of volcanic eruptions. This is not just a mountain spewing lava. This is a pressure cooker deep beneath the crust, waiting for the moment it cannot hold back any longer. Volcanoes form at the edges of tectonic plates or over hot spots, where molten rock called magma builds beneath the surface. Over time, pressure rises, gas expands, and when the system fails, the result can be catastrophic. In 1883, Krakatoa erupted with such force that people over 2,000 miles away heard the explosion. The island itself was shattered. The shockwave circled the globe multiple times. The sky turned dark and global temperatures dropped for years. But it was not just the blast. The eruption triggered massive tsunamis that wiped out coastal villages in minutes. Tens of thousands died and the region was changed forever. Then there was Mount Tambra in 1815. It launched so much ash into the atmosphere that sunlight could not reach the surface. The following year became known as the year without a summer. Crops failed, snow fell in June, and famine spread across continents. Volcanoes do not just destroy land. They disrupt the climate, poison the air, and make entire regions uninhabitable. Ash clouds ground plains. Lava flows erase roads and cities. And pyroclastic flows, fast-moving clouds of gas and rock, can incinerate everything in their path in seconds. Unlike a tornado or quake, volcanoes may give some warning. But even with modern science, predicting the exact moment of eruption is still a challenge. And if this is what one volcano can do, imagine what happens when one explodes on a scale the world has not seen in human history. Level 9. This is not just a volcano. This is Earth tearing itself open on a scale that can end civilizations. A supervolcano does not erupt often, but when it does, the impact is not regional. It is global. Supervolcanoes form when magma builds in massive underground chambers, trapped beneath a crust that cannot release the pressure through normal eruptions. Over thousands of years, gas and heat build up quietly. Then one day, everything gives way. The eruption does not just blow the top off a mountain. It ejects thousands of cubic kilometers of ash, rock, and gas into the sky. Not feet, not miles. Miles. Entire regions vanish in the first moments. The sky turns black, the sun disappears, and the effects ripple across the entire planet. The Toba eruption, around 74,000 years ago, is believed to be the largest volcanic event in human prehistory. Ash fell over most of South Asia, temperatures dropped worldwide, and some scientists believe it triggered a volcanic winter that nearly wiped out early human populations. More recently, Yellowstone in the United States has shown signs of past supervolcanic activity. If it were to erupt again, the immediate damage would be unthinkable thinkable. Cities hundreds of miles away could be buried in ash. Air travel would stop, crops would fail, and within weeks, much of the world would feel the impact. This is not science fiction. Supervolcanoes are real. They are rare, but they are part of Earth's natural cycle. And when they go silent for a long time, it does not mean safety. It means they are still charging. The disasters we have covered so far strike fast and then fade. But the final level is different. It is slower, colder, and it does not just threaten cities. It threatens everything. Level 10. This is not an explosion. There is no flash of light or wall of water. Level 10 is quiet. It unfolds slowly. And by the time we realize what is happening, it may already be too late. Global drought and famine are not just side effects of a bad harvest. They are the collapse of the systems that keep humanity alive. When rain stops falling and heat refuses to break, entire ecosystems begin to fail. Crops wither, rivers dry up, soil turns to dust, and the world starts to run out of food. In the 1930s, the Dust Bowl swept across the American Great Plains. Years of poor farming practices and drought 
turned fertile land into choking clouds of dust. Families fled by the thousands. Livestock died in the fields. That was one region, one era. Now imagine that playing out across the globe. Climate collapse does not strike all at once. It moves like a shadow, spreading instability. Food prices skyrocket. Nations fight over water. Entire populations are forced to migrate. The poorest regions suffer first, but no one is immune. Insects vanish. Coral reefs bleach and die. Forests burn and do not regrow. The safety nets we rely on begin to tear. And eventually, societies that once felt unshakable start to break down under the pressure. This is the ultimate natural disaster. Not because it is fast, but because it is relentless. It turns familiar seasons into survival tests. It does not come for cities or coastlines. It comes for the planet itself. And unlike the others, this disaster is already unfolding. Right now, the question is not whether it will come. The question is how far it will go before we stop it.